Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Jetta Hobby review and today we are going to take a look at another SDCS kit, specifically the Wing Gundam Zero EW. I bought this kit from HobbyFrontline.com. If you're buying from that website too, you can use Jetta Hobby 5 off to get 5% discount. I have the link in the description and now it's time for the review. First up, as usual, let's take a look at the box here. This time around, the box is slightly longer or wider than what we have seen before. The front of the box here says SD frame included, so that is what we are going to get. The CS frame is not included and this is actually a relatively new kit. At the time of recording this video, this kit was released about 6 months ago. On the bottom of the box, we can see that it can be transformed into atmosphere entry mode. The twin buster rifle can be combined like this, and the eyes can be replaced just like any other SD CS kits. As we move along, we can see how it looks on the CS frame, but it's not included. The other side of the box, we can see the head is made of different color pieces, and that is pretty much how it will look without any painting. Now let's take a look inside the box. We are greeted with 6 set of runners, an instruction manual and a special assembly instructions. This one here explains all the symbols used in the instructions. It also shows the recommended tools, finding parts, cutting out the parts and poly caps. There's also instruction on how to apply dry decals and water slide decals, which is pretty informative. As for the instruction manual, this is double sided. As usual, this side is split into two sections, the top for SD frame and the bottom is for CS frame. The back side is fully colored and that is how it should look with a little bit of painting and panel lining. Now that's everything from the box, let's build this thing. That is how it looked without any painting and everything that it comes with. There are two leftover parts from the runners. These are used for containing the eyes. By the way, I did not use all the stickers. This big one here is for the eyes and those two are on the shoulders for the gold lining. The rest of the green reflective should be on the arm and on the buster rifles. I'm keeping these because I plan to use them after I paint this thing. Now let's take a look at the weapons first. These two Buster Rifles are not exactly identical. As you can see from top down, this is for right arm and this is for left arm. But that's according to the instruction anyway. So you can do whatever you want and nobody is going to judge. To hold this thing, you can slide it in like so and that is how it looks in twin mode. As for the iconic pose as shown on the box, we need to take out this little plastic piece and attach on like so. We need to do the same for the other rifle. Once you're done, you can combine them like so. Before we equip him with the combined rifle, we need to adjust the arms, pull out the shoulder a little bit, do the same for the other side, bend them towards the middle. Now we can slide the rifle into the hands. So that is how it looked with the combined buster rifle. To be honest, it's looking pretty badass and cute at the same time. I forgot to mention that the bottom side of the rifle is hollow. Well, pretty much everything looking from the bottom is hollow. Let's move on to the eyes. Like any other SDCS kits, to change the eyes, we just lift up the helmet, pull out the eyepiece, turn it around, and put it back in. I personally prefer this as you all know already because there will be an LED on this kit very very soon. But there is a problem with this eye. It doesn't stay in place very well. Let me show you her. If I turn the head like this, yeah, that happens. Speaking of which, let's see its range of movement. So as usual, the head is on a very tight ball joint resting on a pivot joint which is also a hinge joint. No matter how many different joints they have, the head is still very limited. Here's all the way up and down 
You can turn this left and right by grabbing the chin there. You can basically turn this looking 90 degree to the side and don't even bother about tilting the head. Now let's look at the backpack. There are two pairs of wings here. As for the larger wings, there is a hinge joint here and a pivot joint here. You can get a 360 out of this. Then there is a ball joint at the end. The smaller pair of wings is much more simple. Just a ball joint inside and there is a slot on the side so you can fold the wings like this. Up here we have a hinge so that's all the way up and that's all the way down. So according to the instruction, we can do a transformation for atmosphere entry mode. We need to bring the wings forward, rotate it so that it meets in the middle, and make sure they intersect. Then fold the smaller pair of wings at the back to the side, and that's the atmosphere entry mode. As for the shoulders, like we have seen before, you can pull it out slightly for wider range of movements and it is on a ball joint. The arm is on the ball joint as well and that's all the way up from the side blocked by the arm armor there. Of course, you can turn it around and lift it up a little bit higher. Then again, you can extend the shoulder and go a little bit more. And the hand is just on a single ball joint. This time around, the waist can be rotated as far as this. The side skirt armor is on a ball joint so we can rotate it around. But if you play with it too much, it will just come off like this. As for the leg, it is blocked by the skirt there so if you want him to kick you will have to turn this to the side and kick it up or you can turn it inwards to kick it's pretty depressing for the front kick but the side kick is pretty good for an SD not much for the back kick as usual the ankle armor is on the ball joint but the joint is at the back this time as for the feet that's all the way up and whoa that's all the way down we can use the ankle armor to cover it up tilting left and right and a full 360 rotation now that we have seen everything about this kit, let's compare how it looks beside my Hexa Gears. By the way, if you haven't watched how I painted this, I highly highly recommend you checking it out on my channel. Then here it is next to my other painted and customized SD kits, which he will join them very very soon. So stay tuned. Here are some real grids from 00 series and here is a Master Grid Dynamax. So that's about it for this model kit. The only grab I have is the eyepiece there, which comes off too easily. Other than that, I think this looks pretty cool. But the blue here is too dark for my taste. So I'm going to do something about it really really soon. So remember to subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to hit the like button while you're at it. And don't forget to use Jedi Hobby 5 off as the coupon code if you're buying from hobbyfriendline.com. That wraps up this video, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye!